This tiny, unassuming component is probably why your heating appliance is not working. I'll show you how to test it and how to replace it. So this here is actually a thermal fuse. Um, it's usually included in heating appliances uh, stuck right next to or close to the heating element. In the case of an overheat situation, it'll just blow inside and cut the connection from one side to the other. These things typically have a couple numbers on them, but the really important ones would be the voltage rating. So this one here is a 250 volt unit and the temperature rating. This one here is 192 degrees Celsius. This kettle here is not working right now, but it was working two years ago when I replaced the thermal fuse because it was broken then too. So it's been doing its job daily for two years and without a problem, uh, just need to replace this fuse again. It's not a good idea to bypass these things. These things are a safety device. If one fails, you should replace the device and not just bypass it with a piece of wire. All you have to do is disassemble your appliance. So in the case of this electric kettle, it was just uh, six screws, some of which were tri-lobe screws. So be careful, you might need specialized tools. Link in the description if you want some. Uh, and then we're greeted with this here. And this here, that's the heating element. Make sure you're unplugged, this one is not plugged. So knowing that this is the heating element, uh, this here wire is going around here to the element, around the element, and then back out to the middle here. And right here, if you can see this is clipped onto the element, that is our thermal fuse. Uh, so there's a quick way to test it now. You just grab your multimeter in continuity mode if you're not comfortable using a multimeter, uh, check out the link up here or in the description for my tutorial on how to use one. You put your multimeter into continuity mode, so when you touch it makes a noise. And if it's not connected, it doesn't make a noise. So we know this wire goes all around here and through here. So I'm just going to touch the end to the heater element here and touch the other end to here. And as you can see, there's no continuity. Therefore, there's a break in this wire, and that break is in the thermal fuse. Now if I go the other way through the element, that one has continuity, that one has continuity. So really the only problem here is this. So I'm just going to unscrew it from the base and we should be able to peel back the insulation and see what's going on. So just a little clip. A little bit of shielding and a mica shield. This is uh, like like heat proofing. So don't forget you have to return everything the way it was before. And there is the thermal fuse that I had already replaced. So you can just cut uh, these wires off here with some snippers uh, and then you know strip a little bit back and then put new crimps on. Uh, but I prefer to cut the old crimps off to get the same length of wire set up and then just put new crimps on the end like so. And you can either buy these crimps separately, link in the description, or I just actually uh, took the insulation off one of these insulated ones. You don't want to leave the insulation on because uh, that might be flammable. Uh, so we don't want any of that. So I'm just going to use a crimping tool here to uh, crimp this on. It doesn't have to be super solid, just needs to make a solid connection. And do the other side as well. Make sure you get all the wires in there though for maximum conduction. That's good too. And then you take your new thermal fuse, which is not directional, any direction is fine. Uh, and then you want to slide it in here. Probably want to cut a little bit of length off of it, just so it's roughly the same length as the old one. I'm actually going to cut this one a little bit shorter because my crimps are longer. And then just crimp this back into place. Gonna give this one an extra crimp just to be sure. Like so.
and there we go one crimped connection now all you need to do slide the silicone sleeve back over like so and re-secure it down and you should be good to go all reinstalled and if we take our multimeter and do the same test as we did before from here to here now we have continuity should be good to go let's put this back together and test it and of course no job is complete without confirming our repair so I now have water in the kettle I will stuff that on here help to start LEDs come on so I see that's already an improvement and uh, that'll start heating up now just to show you uh, double confirm what we already knew so basically when I touch these two that means electricity can get from one probe to the other and it makes a beep and a known good one well right out of the package same thing electricity should be able to circulate through here and make a beep that's fine and here is the old one and electricity should be able to get through but it does not so it does not beep so this one is no good can you see the little bubbles forming here uh, it's starting so yeah North America 110 volts so this thing is not going to heat up super quickly but hey we do know it's working which is pretty awesome literally like a minute later it is nearly at the point of boiling it's making all sorts of racket as you can clearly see it is functioning so I'm gonna have some very happy parents when I deliver this to their house tomorrow thanks for watching